Hello and welcome to another episode of Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield, alongside me, per the usual, Coach Russell. Coach Russell, the Tigers had the Cumberland Patriots at home. They lose a close one, 41 to 38, and you got out to a really great mm -hmm. start. You get the fumble recovery off the first snap, one play, and you're up 7 nothing. But then you face a little bit of adversity. You have three drives that end in turnovers. One there, you know, had the offsides that mm -hmm. Jaggers throwing down the field expecting the offsides. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we talked about those middle eight before. Mm -hmm. And it's the four minutes that lead into that end of the half and then the next four. Mm -hmm. And the Tigers certainly won that final four minutes of the first half to get themselves right back in the game. No doubt, you know, scoring twice uh, with less than four minutes to go in the first half is just awesome. I mean, to score a touchdown with 34 seconds to go, I think we were on our own 20 or 25, somewhere in there. Just phenomenal drive by the offense. You know, we, we work that situation every week, you know, what to do once you get the ball, how to handle that. You know, obviously being able to uh, preserve the timeouts to have them during that drive. I think even didn't even end up using it only but one of them. Uh, so just a really good job. That definitely, uh, you know, took all the momentum our way heading into halftime and knowing we were getting the ball uh, coming out of halftime was very huge. So, you know, kudos to our guy. Like you said, a dream start, right? Two plays into the game, you're up 7-0 uh, unexpectedly. And then we kind of just give that right back and even a little more kind of gave ourselves a real uphill battle. Um, but, you know, our guys showed a lot of fight, um, you know, showed – the ability to you know try to get back and have a chance to win a game like that. So that was one of the very encouraging things from Saturday. We were joking there at the end of the half because we were talking about the situation mm -hmm. and we were saying, you know, is this one of those where you get the ball where you want it to be and then kick the field goal, mm -hmm. take your points, you take a shot. Khalil had said, you know, I don't know about it. I don't know that I would take the shot. And then he had to eat his words on yeah. air as <laughs> Shepherson catches the touchdown. But was that one of those things that it just kind of made itself available to you over the middle? Uh, or was that, you know, just it just happened? Or yeah, obviously 6.6 .6 seconds to go. Um, the, the safe thing to do at that point, you could either center the ball and kick the field goal or just go ahead from the right hash and kick the field goal at that point. Totally confident in calling to do either one of those from that distance. Mm -hmm. Uh, we knew one thing was we were chasing points. Yeah. Um, so if we can get seven in that situation, it's a, it, it really swings the momentum your way heading into half, getting the ball after half. The other part of it is having ultimate confidence in our guys, especially Jagger. You know, I had yelled at Adam as something we talk about in our meetings is, hey, in this situation, if you don't see something – you know, early, if you don't see something you really like, you know, just get the ball out of your hands. Even in that situation we've talked about, you know, just fall down, take the sack. We still had two timeouts, so we could have stopped the clock. So, um, yeah, it's just it's, the, it's what we believe in as a staff. It's what we try to instill in our players is to be ultra aggressive. And uh, obviously in that situation it paid off, and that was a big score to end the half. So let's talk about uh, some of the big players mm -hmm. in this one. Jagger Gillis had three interceptions, mm -hmm. but however – his stats look pretty good from there. Um, he threw for five touchdowns, 382 yards. Luke Shepperson has 10 catches, 128 yards, two touchdowns. And the NCCAA um, Defensive Player of the Week, Ellis Reed, had 18 tackles. You know, you're, he was flying all over the field. We were talking yeah. about in terms of defense, you know, Early on in that first half, I mean, it was pretty spread across the board. Mm -hmm. And I had mentioned, you know, usually you see guys like Ellis Reed well up there. And, you know, everybody was just kind of the same. He had four in the first half, and then he comes up mm -hmm. with 14 in that second half. Yeah, I have a great Ellis Reed story I do want to share. is uh, His first game ever last year as a true freshman, uh, we, uh, we played a game, and there was a situation with the game pants where everybody couldn't get the size they wanted. And Ellis rolls out there, first home game ever. Uh, and he's wearing these pants that are about three sizes too big. His knee pad is literally on his shin. And, uh, you know, never said a word, never complained. And there, there was plenty of guys that were. Uh, and he ends up with like 12 or 14 tackles in his first game ever as a true freshman. I'm like, you know, that's a dog right there. That's a guy that you want in your program. He's really 
done a great job stepping into a leadership role. He's a guy that just doesn't miss tackles. <laughs> I mean, when he's the one that's making the tackle, the guy that seems to go down right there on the spot. He's a tremendous player. He's really stepping into his role and becoming a great leader within our program. He's a guy that we're looking at and just so grateful that we've got him for two more years after this year. Um, and he's doing an awesome job. As far as on the offensive side, you know, Jagger, I thought, played a really good game overall. Obviously, we got in a situation chasing points where we, we threw the ball more than we would want to going into the game. We knew it was a game, as I think we talked about last week, where we wanted to get ahead. We thought that would be a game where uh, we would be able to play really good from ahead. That's a team that on their side is built to, you know, run the ball and set up their uh, pass with the run. And so if we could have got them behind, but, you know, they were comfortable all game and what they were doing. And, and that was a big thing in the game. But obviously two of Jagger's picks um, were on a play that, uh, you know, where there is no play and we try to draw them off sides. And, uh, you know, of course we feel like they were off sides. It looks like it on the film, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, did that have an impact on the game? Absolutely it did. And, and Jagger did exactly what he was supposed to do, especially on the first one. Mm -hmm. um, but there were still opportunities and little things within the game. You know, I think a lot of times the fans and even sometimes the players uh, and even the coaches can fall into the trap of you focus on the things that swung the momentum, right? Those two picks on um, calls that weren't made, uh, you know, fumble, whatever it is. And there's really a lot of hidden things within the game when you go back and watch the film and say, well, you know what? We still had the opportunity to win the game if we executed this, whether it's you know, getting a big third down on our side. The first drive of the second half, right, we had a three and out. We run a little throwback play. We missed the throw. Uh, we actually get a false start to start the second half, which was a you know big impact on the game. Uh, we didn't get off the field on third down on defense well enough in the night. So while there was some big momentum swinging things that happened in the game, there were still opportunities to go out there and win, you know, the football game. And we'll talk about the resilience of your quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jagger Gillis throws for three interceptions. That's not something he usually does, but he went out there not looking like a quarterback yeah. who had thrown <clears throat> three interceptions. He was zipping the ball into tough spots over the middle and making the plays he had to make. Yeah, he does a great job with that. He's, he's a very resilient, very tough kid. Um, I mean, he's played every – uh, snap that he's been needed this year and, and you know has as any quarterback that does that throughout the year um, has got to be tough because quarterbacks take a lot of hits uh, especially in what in, in what we ask them to do in our offense um, you know and, and it's not just Jagger the offensive line I think that was their best game overall just to be honest uh, we ran the ball really well and that was one of the disappointing things is we were having to chase points so much that we didn't get a stick with our base stuff and running RPO setting up the play action all those things um, and so we kind of had to get into a different mode. But, you know, the good thing with our offense is we have the ability and we're built to do a lot of different things. And then our receivers, man, you know, some of those tight window throws is also them just making great plays. Mm -hmm. I was joking with the quarterbacks um, yesterday to soak in, you know, the next two games and next year with uh, Luke and Dre on the same side. I mean, those two guys are as good as you're going to find at the NAI level. And to have, you know, that combination of them. And then we got other guys stepping up making big plays, right? Uh, Spencer McCown had a big 15-yard gain. Keon Smith had that big fourth down conversion before we made the final drive. And then Ashton Auker is a guy who's obviously role continues to expand and he just keeps finding the ball and making big plays when the opportunity presents itself. Well, we'll step away and give you a break. When we come back, we'll sit down with the athletics video coordinator, Zach Wilson, here on Under Center with Jake Russell. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? 
love our money. She's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. Welcome back to Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Well, alongside me today, I have the athletics video coordinator, Zach Wilson. Zach, we work together very, very closely. We're together five, six days most of the time out of the week. You know, I, I know what we do behind the scenes. A lot of people don't. So why don't you explain a little bit about the role as athletics video coordinator? What we do is we put on all of our athletic broadcasts uh, for the university for everything from football to swimming, volleyball, and flag football. It's uh, everything in between. Um, you know, we, we work a lot of long hours, like you said, and a lot of late nights sometimes, but you know, it makes it worth it when we know that our athletic teams are getting the coverage that they deserve. So what goes into this coverage? You know, a lot of people just can watch it. What goes into this coverage? Um, a, a lot of stuff. A lot of the stuff that we do is student-led. Actually, most of the stuff that we do is student-led. So um, that, you know, pans from students running camera to instant replay to directing in the control room, which, you know, people may or may not know that switching cameras back and forth, uh, just giving out different directions of what to do for everybody involved in the broadcast. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into a broadcast that people may or may not know, but, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that does happen and, um, you know, it takes a lot of hands on deck to make a broadcast possible and, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. And this equipment that we're dealing with, you know, it's it's pretty high tech and yeah, it leads to a lot of problems and you know we're there to help step in and fix like the really serious stuff correct but you know the students for the most part are troubleshooting they're the ones going through calling out you know I need this color corrected I need right. it to get brighter you know they're making decisions we kind of just help guide but it's really them truly leading the way oh yeah absolutely everything you know that's kind of what we're here for is to teach these students what to do um, for the broadcast and, you know, uh, have them experience it so that they can take the next step when they leave here uh, from being a student to go get a job in the field and make sure they can do what they need to do when, you know, with whatever position they're running or whatever they choose to do with the broadcast field. Uh, but like you said, you know, they do most of the stuff as far as changing color correction for cameras or, you know, calling the shots on which camera angles to take during the game or, you know, fixing an audio issue. You know, we're kind of there for more technical side of things, but also just teaching the students is kind of what me and you do. Now, I know the, ch I know the challenges that we have to face, especially with a student-led mm -hmm. group. What, what, just explain some of those. I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, with technology, anything can yeah. go wrong at any given time. Um, so you have to be, you know, prepared for the worst at any given time that you're doing a broadcast. Um, anything can go wrong at all. And uh, you just got to be able to fix it. On You got to be on top of things. You know, you have to know what to do when something does go wrong. But at the same time, uh, you know, that can go anywhere from a camera going black or, you know, you know, just going out, losing battery, losing power. An SDI cord could, you know, just go out. It, it's, it's just whatever, anything that happens might happen and you just got to be prepared for it. Arguably one of my favorite challenges I think that we've had to face is five minutes before an NAI national tournament yeah. first opening round, we have to go out and all of a sudden... Uh, you know, nothing on our end. Right. The school's Wi-Fi shuts down due to a faulty strip. And next thing you know, we don't have internet. We can't get it out. So yeah. now we're in a pure scramble. And it's just, it, it's so crazy yeah. what can happen. And I don't think a lot. And then we have to deal with student schedules as well, which is great. Oh, yeah. I love having the students work. But you also have, you know, several events. We have a week that, you know, I'm going to mention that's a lot of stuff coming up. We have four or five events going on on mm -hmm. campus that get streams. And, you know, we have kids that are athletes, and that comes first. Students, so class always comes first. And so you just kind of get a little shorthanded, and you have to do a lot of, you know, finagling. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 
like you said, when, especially when we get into like the spring semester of sports, uh, when dealing with student schedules, you know, we have sp uh, softball and baseball games in the middle of the day, two o'clock and, you know, noon sometimes students have class. So you, you've got two events going on at once. You've kind of got to, you know, mess with the schedule a little bit and see where you can pull students in and out and see, you know, if they've got class, if they can come to work, you know, working two events at once. It can get difficult at times, but, you know, that's part of the job at the same time, you know, um, events like this, we, or weekends like this with four events going on, you know, students are spread thin, but you got to do what you can to make it work. Now, we've shifted to a little bit more of a membership base, Claw United mm -hmm. and Claw United Plus, which you all should join. Um, however, that switch was made for very strategic reasons. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of those reasons? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's just start by saying, uh, you know, the equipment that we use is not cheap. Um, we use expensive equipment on a daily basis. And in order to keep the stream progressing and our athletic streams, you know, continue getting them better and better, we have to upkeep with the equipment, you know, um, whether it's getting cameras that can shoot in higher quality, you know, higher resolution, or, you know, just getting lenses that can reach, you know, from wherever we're at in the booth or, you know, wherever. Um, we have to keep up with the equipment. So, you know, it's not cheap. We got to be able to pay for it somehow, and um, that's part of it. Another thing is, you know, our students work hard. They work a lot of events, a lot of long hours. Um, it, it's tough for them sometimes to, you know, work these games for little pay. So we want to take that money and give it back to the students by giving them more money to come work games and, you know, just stay engaged, want to keep learning and growing in the field. And they work hard mm -hmm. and, you know, the students, you know how students are, you know, we were students, you know how it Absolutely. is and you have, you know, we work a lot of weekends, that's athletics for you and so you work a lot of Fridays, a lot of Saturdays and, you know, you could go somewhere or do something else or maybe even just go and do homework if you're really right. trying to be a great student. And they, you know, they come to work and they put in the time, they give up some of that stuff. And it's really nice to just kind of feed them back something to really show our appreciation. Absolutely. I mean, you, you take, for example, students can't really go home a lot on the weekends if they're doing what we do. Because, like you said, we work so many weekends, uh, there's always pretty much an athletic event every weekend. So you take that into account, students... You know, you got to give them a little bit of incentive to want to come to work, but also at the same time, what we do is such a good experience for these students that you don't really get at a lot of places. So, I mean, that's also awesome for the students to be able to come in, learn what we're doing, make it a hands-on experience at the same time, and then continue to grow in their, in their education and then take that next step when they get out of school. Well, knowing the weekend we have ahead, just like Coach, I wish you good luck as well. Thank you. Uh, you hoping as well. to make it through the weekend. <laughs> we'll step away, and when we come back, we'll sit down and talk with Coach about the upcoming game against the Bethel Wildcats here on Under Center with Jake Russell. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper.
Welcome back to Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Alongside me once more is Coach Russell. Coach Russell, let's talk about this upcoming stretch. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have two of the toughest Mid-South Conference opponents left in Bethel, Tennessee and Georgetown. Bethel, Tennessee has one loss on the season. It's to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. That was 52 to 24. Um, you know, you could take what you want from that, but what goes into the preparation of this week when you know you're coming really down the gauntlet of your schedule? Yeah, obviously two top ten programs in the nation, both, you know, on the rise. Coach Jasper, Coach Oliver doing a great job uh, this week specifically. Uh, just a team that's going to be loaded with talent. I mean, they're doing a great job over there, you know, getting talent uh, down to Bethel. And then also just developing them. You can see uh, they're just continued improvement on offense. Uh, this will be a battle of, you know, two of the best quarterbacks probably at this level and got a lot of respect for them. They can they can beat you in different ways on offense, right? They can throw the ball. They can run the ball. This is probably the most balanced team offensively will play. And then they've just got some studs on defense. I mean, they're big up front. They're athletic. Uh, and then in the secondary, they're super rangy and athletic, can run and tackle, want to be physical, all those things. So, you know, it's just a great – um, opportunity for our guys. Uh, I talked to them after the game about you know what was off the table now, right? We're not uh, going to win the conference championship. We're not going to go to the playoffs this year. You know those were obviously two of our big three um, goals before the season, and uh, so now you get to really find out a lot about your guys, uh, your staff, your players, everybody who's still willing to buy in when uh, seemingly there's nothing really to gain from it, but. Uh, there, there is so much to gain from this. One, building the momentum in our program. Uh, two, you know, beating a team like this. You know, I can remember even as a player myself getting those first couple wins over top, you know, 10 or top five opponents and the impact, uh, not just in momentum and recruiting and all those things and support. And that's the opportunity we have Saturday. Uh, it's senior day, right? We don't have many this year, um, but we want to honor those guys the right way. There are, there are a couple guys that have been in this program four or five years. Uh, been through everything you can be through over their career here and we just want to honor those guys the right way uh, and it, it's our last home game it's kind of bittersweet right our home games are so fun our community our university our support people they do such a good job with these events and, and we're so grateful for that and we just want this one to be the best uh, you know of them all so let's break into this mm -hmm. game just a little bit you know your tiger defense who's been pretty good all season is going to go up against a pretty tough opponent mm -hmm. on offense. They're the second leading scorer in the nation. They average about 46 points a game. And they're pretty heavy through the air, honestly. They mm -hmm. throw on average for over 300 yards a game, but they also rush for almost 150. Yeah. That's a lot of yards. What do you do for this defense? What's the key to success here? To match their physicality, uh, actually exceed their physicality, right? I, I say it to the guys a lot, don't match it, exceed it. So, you know, exceed their physicality. Uh, like you said, they're able to beat you in a lot of different ways. They're very talented uh, in the passing game, obviously with the quarterback, and they have some great, great weapons uh, at the receiver position. Uh, but they're also very talented up front, and they have some great uh, running backs in their group as well. So uh, this is a team that you've just got to be very assignment sound, very disciplined. Uh, they're going to attack those one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups. They're going to take their opportunities when you uh, are giving them something. Uh, they do a great job over there. Offensive coordinator does a great job trying to find the opponent's weakness. Like you said, while their offense is very balanced and everything, I would say our defense is very balanced, right? We've shown the ability this year to do a lot of uh, everything on our side. We've, we've been very good in the secondary, not giving up explosive plays. We've done a great job up front pressuring the quarterback, you know, getting some negative plays in the run game as well. And that really frees up those guys in the middle. We talked about Ellis earlier, but we've got other guys, Kel Hagan, Jeremiah Pauling, uh, Adam Chaney's really came along as the years went on. Gunnar Hall is stepping in there some. All those guys doing a really good job just running and tackling, creating a lot of chaos. So this is going to be a game, you know, this, like you said, is the best offense we're going to play this year. It's a great challenge for our offense to take that, you know, who's the best offense in the conference type of thing. Um, but it's definitely going to take a, a really solid performance from our defense overall, uh, you know, for us to have an opportunity to win the game. Now we'll step to the <laughs> offense side mm -hmm. and – this defense is just as tough as the offense is. You talked about the secondary. They have four pick sixes yeah. on the year. They're extremely good. Minus the 52 points they gave up, I mean, that's added into this equation, but they're averaging only allowing 12 points a game. Mm -hmm. That is a very tough defense. 
what is the key to success for your offense? Yeah, just to execute. If you go back to, to Saturday, we knew if we just played a very clean game, we would have a great opportunity to win the game. Well, five turnovers, right? And we still score six touchdowns, turning the ball over five times. We only had uh, six third downs the whole game. That, that stat, I had to check that three or four times. Like, that's got to be a typo. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we just executed our stuff offensively and it was just clean. And when I say clean, that means everybody's just doing their assignment. The play might not work. We might not make the catch. The defense might make a great play. Uh, might not be a 50-yard you know, play or a touchdown. But it's just continuing to stay in front of the sticks, allow us to get, in, in, uh, get us in the position to do what we like to do. Uh, and that's what we've got to do on Saturday, right? We've got the ability to move the ball on anybody in the country. We've got the ability to score points on anybody in the country. Um, and this will be a great test for us. Like I said, I've already challenged the quarterback saying, you know, this is the, the guy in the conference that's seen as the best quarterback. He's winning a lot of awards. His stats are awesome. Um, you know, and he runs a really good offense over there. And so I hope they're really, um, you know, kind of taking on that challenge, just quarterbacks individually, but also as a whole offense that, you know, I always loved it as a player. It's like, this is supposed to be the best offense. Like, you know, no, let's go show them kind of who it is. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's one of the things about this conference is you get in these games against these great offenses, great defenses, great opponents in general. And uh, like I've said before, that just creates a great opportunity for a program changing win. Now, one of the other interesting stats, I thought you were down five at the half mm -hmm. and the time of possession was about 22 odd minutes for the Patriots, mm -hmm. eight minutes for us. Yeah. And you're only down five. I mean, just those quick strikes and I mean, the two touchdowns there within three minutes obviously helps that out a lot. Mm -hmm. But talk about your ability to just make some big plays. Yeah, you know, time of possession is uh, is something, it can be very valuable. I, I am a huge believer, as I've said on this show, that the offense should have a huge impact on the overall football game. Uh, that's something that when you go back and look at it and you say, well, you know, Cumberland scored 41 points, right? Well, we threw a pick six, we turned the ball over on the one, uh, we turned it over a couple more times and gave them a short field. Uh, we uh, and, and, that, and that can even go into special teams, right? When we turned over on the one, we had a return and got a holding, and the ball came all the way back to the five or whatever it was on. So all those things coupled in affects you know, the points that the other team has at the end of the day. You know, nobody would have watched that game Saturday and said, well, the defense just played awful. They really didn't. They played a really good game overall. They did a good job uh, trying to get Cumberlands out of what they wanted to do. Uh, and so, like I said, all three phases have got to be complementary of each other. We lost all three phases of the game Saturday, right? Um, we've got to win all three to be able to win this game Saturday against a really good opponent. So we're looking forward to the challenge. Um, like I said, our guys are, are really resilient. One thing I know for a fact they'll do is fight. They've shown that all year. Uh, there hasn't been a game yet where it looks like, you know, they've given up or anything like that. And I know for a fact they won't. And they're, they're really excited, you know, about these top 10, top 15 opponents that we're going to face over the next two weeks. And I know they're really excited as well, you know, to kind of have this one last home game this season. It's been a great group. And, um, you know, I think they'll come out and play really well. Well, thank you for your time, Coach, and best of luck this weekend. Absolutely. Thank you. The Tigers will face the Wildcats of Bethel, Tennessee. This one is set for 2.30 kickoff at Finley Stadium. You can follow all the action on the CU Tigers YouTube channel on the CU Sports Network. It's a big day for CU Athletics, a lot of events on Friday, Saturday, so be sure to catch our YouTube page for all that coverage. Thank you for tuning in to Under Center with Jake Russell. See you next week.